Now for this substitution reactions, there are some guidelines you need to know for going through all of these, and they're all on this page. Okay, this, in the first one, the strength of the base or the nucleophile depend, determines the order of the reaction. A strong base, strong nucleophile has to be an E2 or an SN2. A weak base or a weak nucleophile is going to be an SN1 or an E1. Okay. Then the second one, primary halides, are primarily going to be SN2 reaction, unless you have a, a strong base that is a very bad nucleophile. And then the tertiary halides, they if you have a strong base, they're E2. If you have a weak base, they're going to be either an E1 or an SN1. And then the secondary halides, depending on what you have, can either be uh, SN2 or E2 or e, SN1 or E1, and you really have to be careful what you have going on. If you have a strong base, strong nucleophile, it'll be a 2 mechanism. If you have a weak base, weak nucleophile, it'll be a 1 mechanism. And then the next one, polar protic versus a protic. The polar protic reactions favor an SN1 mechanism, polar a protic favor an SN2. High temperatures favor elimination, and then strong some bases favor substitution if they're small, like methoxide, whereas some favor elimination if they're big, like t-butoxide. So we have to be careful what we have available to us to decide what can happen. Hello again, and here we are in part four of substitution reactions, and we're going to talk about the SN1 mechanism. And in the SN1 mechanism, it stands for substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. So in the rate determining step, which is the slowest step of the mechanism, the leaving group leaves, forming the cation, and then the nucleophile adds to the cation to form our product. So if we look at the first reaction down here, we can draw a mechanism for it where the first step is the leaving group leaves, forming the cation, and then the iodide adds to that cation to form our product of the 2-iodo-2-methyl-butane. In the second problem here, we have our leaving group leave, forming our cation, and then our methanol, which is the nucleophile, will add to that cation to form the protonated ether because methanol added to all of methanol added and then from this we will use another equivalent of methanol to remove that extra hydrogen to get to our ether compound. So in the second example since we didn't have a negatively charged nucleophile but a neutral compound which we then had to remove a hydrogen off of we have one, two, three steps in our mechanism, so the reaction coordinate diagram would have three peaks, with the first one being the rate determining step. So to talk about the, the stereochemistry of the reaction, just like we did of the SN2 in, the, in part three, here in the SN1, we form the cation. The cation here is trigonal planar, and sp2 hybridized so the nucleophile will add from either side so if you start with the stereocenter and go through the trigonal planar intermediate you're going to get some of both products the front side attack and back side attack one will be the same stereochemistry as what you started and one will be the inversion of it and you'll get roughly the equal amount of both in the reaction more, a little more or less depending on the, the structure of your compound, but pretty close to a one-to-one. -one. So in the mechanism, if we look in the bottom, the bromine leaves forming our trigonal planar cation, and then the orbital, the chlorine, can add from either the left side or either the right side or the left side, pardon me, to give us either of our products where we invert the stereochemistry or retain the stereochemistry. And we'll get some of both, and on the test, you need to draw both 
compounds out if you have a stereo center and do an SN1 mechanism. So here's a comparison of SN1 versus SN2 processes and what to look for. In the SN2 mechanism, the rate determining step is primarily the only step in the mechanism. The rate is equal to the substrate concentration and the nucleophile concentration. The rate of the reaction is best for a methyl, which is better than a primary, better than a secondary, much better than a tertiary leaving group. And the stereochemistry, if there is any, is there is an inversion of configuration. And the SN1 mechanism, there are two steps, at least two steps to the mechanism. The first one is the, the leaving group leaves. The rate determining step is the formation of the cation. And then we either have front side or back side attack. So the rate determining step is the slowest step. The loss of the leaving group, the rate is equal to the concentration of only our substrate for the rate of the reaction since we have to form that cation. A tertiary compound is best than a secondary, than a primary, than a methyl. And if there is steros a stereocenter, the racemization of configuration occurs. So in drawing a complete mechanism for an SN1, we have one shown here where the leaving group leaves, forming the cation, and, and think about the steps of the mechanism for what happens we have the loss of the leaving group where one arrow goes to the bromine that forms the Br minus and the cation on our carbo carbon and then methanol adds to that and we get our substituted or protonated ether and then in the, that's the nucleophilic attack and then in the next step we have methanol coming in to grab a hydrogen to do the proton transfer to give us our final ether compound okay and in these, think about what has what is occurring, what is your nucleophile, what does it form when it attacks our cation, and keep track of what can occur. Okay. Here we have another example. We don't have a good leaving group to start with, so we have to protonate our alcohol to turn it into a good leaving group. So we have the proton transfer where it attacks a strong acid. Then once we have the the OH2 plus, it can leave forming the cation, then chloride could add to in our nucleophilic attack to give, give us our product. Okay, Remember the good leaving groups that we have talked about primarily so far have been the halogens, but water is also a weak base, so it is also a good leaving group. Now one thing we have to think about is if the cation that we form initially isn't the most stable cation, a carbocation rearrangement can occur. So in this example, if we have the 2-bromo-3,4-dimethylbutane, as we have here, when the bromine leaves to form the cation, the methyl can migrate over to form a tertiary cation, because here we have a secondary cation, but here once a methyl migrates over, we end up with a tertiary cation, which is much more stable, and then the chloride adds to that. So if we don't form the most stable cation we can, when our loss of our leaving group, it will rearrange to form a more stable cation and then add our nucleophile to it. So here we have an SN2, we have a weak base, weak nucleophile, but we have a primary leaving group. So all that can happen is the methanol can come in and attack. Then we can remove the extra hydrogen off of it to get to our neutral compound. Here we also have a, a primary alcohol. It's not a good leaving group. So since we have the sulfuric acid, we can protonate it to turn it into a good leaving group and then our bromide can come in and displace the water to give us our final answer of the the one bromobutane. And whenever we don't have a good leaving group like we don't here with our starting alcohol, we have to turn it into a good leaving group to do either the SN1 or the SN2 mechanism for it. 
So here we have a epoxide, and in with the epoxide we add acid, so we're going to protonate the epoxide to form a good leaving group, and then water can add to the three-membered ring, opening it up, and this oxygen ends up being this oxygen, and then the water ends up on the, the second carbon away, and then we remove the extra hydrogen off of the water to form the, the diol. So here we are back to the summary of what to look for in the substitutions. Make sure you know this page. If you have questions about it, feel free to email as we're going along. Okay, But methyl and primary substrates favor SN2. Tertiary substrates favor SN1. Secondary allylic benzoic substrates can react either way, SN2 or SN1. And vinyl and aryl substrates do not react via either mechanism because to react it has to be an sp3 hybridized carbon okay remember that as you're going forward in this class that it has to be an sp3 hybridized carbon to get anywhere